today we are going to make a Polish delight and one of my favorites, pierogies. But they're gonna be keto friendly. It seems like every culture has a pocket of dough with some kind of tasty filling on the inside of it. And I am a fan of them all. I don't know much about Polish culture other than the fact that I married a Polish man. I just know that I really love pierogies. I used to go to the grocery store, buy the ones in the package and eat them probably once a week. I have not had a pierogi in about five years. And so I am very excited to see if this hack will hold up today. So earlier in the year, Sarah and I made a video where we tested a ravioli hack using provolone cheese. And we found this hack on TikTok where they take provolone cheese, they put it on pieces of parchment paper and it melts it in a circle that you can then fill with a bunch of fillings. And we made a sausage filling for that video about 10 months ago. And it turned out really well, it was delicious, it tastes like a ravioli. But in the back of my mind, I was always thinking, could this be a pierogi? Because Unless you're deep frying them, which some people do, a pierogi at its essence is a soft, doughy outside with a potato or other type of filling. And so I thought this would work really well. And one of you actually tried it. We received this comment from Mallow from Canada. I think that you're from Canada because you have a Canadian flag in your icon. Tried this and made pierogies out of it and said it was delicious. So we're gonna try it today. So we're gonna try two types of fillings today. The first one's going to be a mock potato cheese filling, which is gonna be cauliflower, obviously. But I thought I would surprise Sarah with the second. Huh? So I have this. Do you know what this is? Farmer cheese. I have never heard of this before. Me either. But I decided that we are going to also be making a sweet version of this pierogi. No. <laughs> because I was wondering if this would hold up. Like, would it be disgusting to try provolone pierogies with a sweet filling or not? No, thank you. Well, we're gonna try it anyway. I bought the ingredients. So it's going to be a sweet filling with uh, strawberries and whipped cream on top. Yummy. I love strawberries, but I don't know if I like them with cheese. You like them with cream cheese? With cheese and then more cheese. Cheese and then more cheese inside of it with strawberries on top. I don't know. Well, we're gonna make it anyway. You're gonna make that one. Ugh. Why do I have to do that one? Well, I figured, you know, I think that this is going to be a home run. The one with the mashed potatoes and the cauliflower and the cheese. I think that's too easy. I thought we needed to like test the limits of this ravioli hack, now a pierogi hack, and put something sweet in there and try it to see if we could taste the provolone. Listen, if you put whipped cream on something, you're probably not going to taste it. Probably. I, I'm very hesitant about this one. I'm not going to lie. This is what we do here on this channel. We're all about experimenting, so let's give it a go. For the filling, we're going to be using 12 ounces of cauliflower, which we're going to roast in the oven at 450 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes until you see that golden brown color. We've tossed those cauliflower florets on a little bit of avocado oil, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and that's gonna give a really nice roasted flavor to this filling. The more that you cook cauliflower, the less it tastes like cauliflower. So if you're trying to do a mock potato recipe, cook cauliflower as long as you possibly can. And the best thing that you can do is roast it. So I put the roasted cauliflower in the Nutribullet and I added some liquid into it. I chose to use heavy whipping cream. I added about a couple tablespoons at a time until I saw the consistency I liked. And then I pulsed it until smooth. And if you don't have a pen and paper, don't worry. I'm going to be putting this all on our website, ketotwins.com, linked below. So now I'm gonna be taking our cauliflower mash and I'm going to be putting it in a bowl. And then I'm going to add half a cup of shredded mozzarella. Okay, so our filling is done and we're gonna set that aside. So we have some toppings going for our pierogies and I'm really excited about them. <laughs> I love toppings for pierogies. We have sour cream, we have bacon bits, we have some sauteed onions that are ready to go. They've been sitting here waiting for the pierogies to be done. I'm thinking about adding the bacon bits into there so they get warmed up. What do you think about that? And all mixed together. That sounds good. Key to this hack is to melt the Sargento provolone slices on a piece of parchment paper so that you can easily manipulate them. So so this is the provolone that we've been using for this hack with ravioli and everything for a month, but we've never used it for a sweet application. So I am nervous about this now. You should be. Yeah, I don't know if um, what I was thinking doing this, but I just try to keep it interesting. We're always willing to try new things here. I don't really think that this provolone tastes smoky, but try to avoid ones that say like, I don't think smoky. it smells. Yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't smell that bad. Yeah, it doesn't. No. Okay, I'm, I'm grateful for that. So we're going to be putting, I don't know what, six or four? Yeah. Three each. Three each, yeah. okay. So preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Lay out your provolone nicely on a sheet of parchment paper. 
And then you're gonna put your provolone in the oven for a couple minutes, keep an eye on it. You don't want it to get too melted. You still want it to have its integrity so that you can create pierogies out of this, okay? Okay, so our provolone is melted. We're gonna pull it out. Okay, so this is very bubbly and very melted. We're gonna want this to harden up a little bit before we start working with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull off our pierogi shells onto this colder granite surface so that they begin to harden up and we can start to fill them. That, that might be too much, Emily. You're no, pushing it. it's not. Okay. That looks like tuna for some reason. I can't get over it. It does look like tuna. What are you doing? Why don't you explain it? I was not fast enough and I had to put them back in the oven to get them soft again. If this happens, just keep on putting them back in the oven. Get that cheese a little bit melted again and take them out and start filling them again. So our savory pierogies are filled and they are looking really good. We're gonna put them aside and now Sarah is going to make the sweet I'm never filling. Ending the video. <laughs> no, we bought the ingredients, we're doing it. So Emily had this whole pierogi idea and I had no idea that she had sweet pierogies in mind because I probably would have nixed this video if it was up to me. But here we are and she's the one that ordered all of the products and she also came up with the recipe. So if it doesn't turn out well, you can blame her. Anyway, so apparently she bought this thing called farmer's cheese, or farmer cheese, it's not even farmer's, it is farmer cheese. And um, I think Emily picked this up at a local European market that's in Chicago. Apparently it's like a drier ricotta cheese. Uh, this recipe is really simple. We're gonna be using half this container of farmer cheese, which is about 16 ounces, so that would be about eight ounces. We're going to be mixing that in a bowl with some allulose. I think we're using about six tablespoons of powdered allulose and about half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And that's, Yummy. that's it, which is surprisingly simple and scary at the same time. Emily also has some strawberries here, so I'm assuming we're gonna garnish with some strawberries. And yeah. So we're gonna be using the same method that we used for the savory pierogi. We're gonna be putting our cheese on a parchment paper lined pan. We're gonna be putting it in the oven. And then we're gonna be topping it with some strawberries and trying it, so. Whipped cream. And with, oh yeah. <laughs> There's some whipped cream to Yummy. garnish it. I can't wait. Sarah's favorite thing is strawberries and cream. It was, probably until I eat this dish. All right, here we are. Um, Sarah is demanding that we try the savory one first. So here we have our keto-friendly pierogies. They look legit, I think so, especially with the toppings on there. This is not the one I'm nervous about. In fact, this is the one I'm excited about. The other one is the one that I'm nervous about because of the sweet and savory element. One, two, three. Mm, mm, mm. I can't even taste that it's cauliflower, <laughs> but I'm so used to cauliflower now. Really good. These taste all really like pierogies, yeah, soft they pierogies. Taste, yeah, they taste really good. The cheese goes well with the cauliflower mash. This is absolutely delicious. You have to try this if you love pierogies. Mmm. It's legit. It's amazing. Okay, so this is the end of the video. <laughs> Subscribe. I don't know why I do this. I always think it would be funny to do it to experiment and then I don't want to eat what I've chosen to do. So this is really good. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I like to test the limits of these hacks. The first time we did this, we did it with a sausage filling and it tasted like a ravioli. Mm -hmm. The second time we did it with a pumpkin sage filling with a brown butter sauce. a little sauce. bit of sweetness to mm -hmm. that. So it was really good. So I figured why not go sweet and just to see if, if we could taste the savory aspect of the provolone in there. Um. So our whipped cream has collapsed. <laughs> if you're brave enough to make this, tag us on Instagram. We will feature you in our Instagram stories because you deserve to be. <laughs> well, See? maybe nobody will. We don't, haven't tried it yet. Maybe this is just like a waste of time right here. So we're gonna go on three. One, two, three. <laughs> this reminds me of eating cottage cheese with like fruit on the side. 
Very similar. <laughs> I don't think it tastes that bad. No. But I can't get over the texture of the of the cheese. The cheese is now hard. It is solidified. And it it's tastes chewy. like cheese. It doesn't taste like anything. I mean, it doesn't taste like cheese. It doesn't taste like anything, really. It tastes like whipped cream because there's whipped cream all over it. But to me, that can only come from this cheese because I'm so used to eating it. I don't think it's terrible. I'm still eating it because I'm hungry. I haven't eaten anything today. So, um, but I wish I had four, two more of the other one, yeah. honestly, so. The filling itself might just be a good snack too. With strawberries yeah, and a little Yeah, with strawberries, bowl. yeah. In my opinion, you cannot win them all. And I would say that the second one is gonna be a no. The and filling I, itself is okay. The filling itself is really good. Farmer's cheese is a very neutral tasting cheese. It's great for like uh, on the sweeter side of things, but the provolone shell, it really is off-putting texture wise. I wouldn't say that it even tasted like anything texture wise. It's just a little bit off. So unfortunately, I would not make sweet pierogies out of this hack, but I will be making the other one again. Technically keto, our shirts probably are still live at this point. So many of you have actually bought them and they're selling out in certain sizes. Hopefully they'll be able to restock. We'll be able to offer it again soon if it's sold out in any of these um, bigger sizes. But technically keto, if you'd like to see other videos where we use this hack to make some tasty things actually, you can click on one of the videos on the screen and we'll see you over there. Anyway, I'm Sarah. And I'm Emily. And, and we, we are the Keto, keto Twins, signing out. out. <laughs>